nanobot carrying an immobile sperm cell directly to an egg for a fertility treatment I can't is he gave a little buddy a boost I cannot believe my eyes the thing is though nanobot technology has advanced massively in recent years and that's just one of their many applications now you see these nanobots are around a hundred times smaller than a human cell and they even have little motors that they can control to move around as they please they can sense their environment, connect with each other wirelessly, deliver drugs to their target area, and store all of that on their onboard memory. There's some studies showing that they can diagnose cancer cells early and even search and destroy them using some of their onboard equipment. We can also act to support our immune systems to make sure that invading cells like viruses and bacteria don't get to where they want to be. Of course, people have some concerns about the implications injecting tiny robots will have on our bodies as essentially the person who manufactures them could program them to do pretty much whatever they like. Would you let the nanobots in? Let us know in the comments. The future is here because bug drones or nanobots are finally upon us. So this tiny little guy here, I have to show you a picture to give an idea of the scale, is barely bigger than a coin. It actually flies through the air like a fly or a mosquito and you can control it. It's also very fast for its size. It's not fast in general. We're way faster. It's a little bit slower than a traditional bug, but it's not slow, slow, and it's improving. This was created at the School of Mechanical and Materials Engineering at Washington State University. And the way these work, or why they can be so small, is they're super tiny actuators, the smallest that has ever been made. They even use some shape uh, memory alloy or material that changes shapes when it's heated in order to help control the machine. And I think this is insane. I, I don't really understand the tech very well. When you get to dealing with things this small, it becomes more of a physics problem and less an engineering problem. But the point of this video, from me to you, is just to say that some very strange things may be coming in our future, and I'm concerned. They've developed insect-sized drones with soft actuators, mimicking the agility and resilience of bugs. These tiny drones can withstand collisions, making them perfect for navigating confined spaces. The soft actuators, essentially artificial muscles, allow these micro drones to flap their wings rapidly, achieving impressive flight capabilities. These drones are so agile that they can even perform somersaults in the air. But why the focus on such small drones? Well, the potential applications are vast. From pollinating crops and inspecting complex machinery, to search and rescue missions, these tiny robots could revolutionize various industries. For instance, inspecting a turbine engine's interior would be much easier with a small, agile drone equipped with a camera. In agriculture, as bee populations face challenges, these drones could step in to help with pollination. Now let's delve deeper into the technology behind these innovations. The soft actuators in MIT's drones are made from thin rubber cylinders coated in carbon nanotubes. When voltage is applied, these nanotubes produce an electrostatic force, causing the rubber cylinder to elongate and contract. This rapid movement results in the flapping of the drone's wings. The design is not only power efficient, but also incredibly resilient. These drones can recover from collisions, making them ideal for real-world applications. Furthermore, the fabrication techniques behind these drones are groundbreaking. MIT's approach to building soft actuators involves layering elastomer and electrode, with each layer being about the diameter of a red blood cell. This meticulous process results in actuators that require significantly lower voltage and can carry more payload. The future looks promising, with hopes to reduce the thickness of these layers even further, unlocking more potential applications. The future of drone technology is not just about scaling up, but also scaling down. As we look What y'all think, man? That's pretty cool, man. You can do anything with them drones. They're so tiny that like they can fit anywhere. Mike could be in front of your face. You could think it's just a common bug. But I think that'd be pretty cool for us to have that just to play with it anywhere. Like, imagine being outside, but I wonder how it with the wind hitting it. You think y'all be able to steer there? You think the wind gusts to just take it? I don't know. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Do you think this is a cloud? I thought so at first, till I saw it move. Yeah, I got video clips of that thing moving. Let me just show you. 
Here we go. Looks like a cloud, but it ain't staying still. It's starting to move. Here it comes, and it's kind of coming like it knows where it's going. It knows where it's going, baby cakes. I know it didn't move much there, but I got more. I got a longer clip, and that cloud is making some moves, baby. Here it goes. It's gonna fly where it wants to. If this is a cloud, it ain't no normal cloud because it's decided to just leave the sky. It's going down, but not to the ground. It's gonna take a flight to the left. This cloud's got a mission. I don't know what that mission is, but it's shenanigans. Some shenanigans going on here, Booskies. So my question to you, yeah, you right there. Have you ever seen a cloud decide to do something like that before? Because I haven't, and I'm older than dirt. Yeah, dirt. So if you've ever seen a cloud do something like this, let me know in the comments. It kind of looked like it got light sprinkling inside, don't it? I've seen a couple other videos with strange phenomenons in the sky doing the same things. Comment section, Booskies. Shaman. Did this Dr. Emoto experiment show us how our tongues can affect water? And how this experiment went was Dr. Emoto, he had three jars full of rice and water. They literally had the same conditions, and the only thing that changed was the verbal language to it. The one all the way over here, he spoke good things, love, and life into it, and positive affirmations. And the jar that's all the way on the right, he spoke negative things to it. And the middle one, he said nothing to it. He literally left it completely alone, just to see the difference between all three of them. And a month later, after this experiment continued, now here goes the results. And the jar that he spoke positive affirmations into, it began to ferment, giving off a positive odor smell through the air. While the one that was ignored, it began to do its natural decay. But the one that he spoke negative to, ended up decaying even faster than the one that was ignored. And let me show you the crystal that form inside of the water from the words that you speak to it. Like some kind of reaction to it. It's even in the Bible, it's power in the tongue. But this kind of shocked me. Water has this tendency to mirror whatever it's exposed to in its liquid crystal state. So if you show it an image and then you put it in the freezer, right before it completely solidifies, it will reflect back to you the image that you showed it. Initially, I thought this was probably a Jesus in the toast phenomenon, but clearly we have a ton of examples of this working. This is deep. Different types of water freeze differently. Water from a spring looks different than rainwater. Filtered water looks like it went through the filter, and tap water looks... This is wild. This is a singing bowl. Left image was before the singing bowl. Right image, after that. They look the same. Left image, spring water looking natural like a leaf. Right image, microwave water. So I left something out of this image. This is what the water looked like when it was frozen. The water was not exposed to that image or the one over there, though. It was only exposed to Veda's thoughts. She was literally just thinking of a medieval helmet. So what exactly is going on here? We kind of don't understand, really. We do know that water reflects frequency at an extreme level. You can see harmonics and water droplets. You can see rainbows and the entire visible light spectrum through a water droplet. In a way, it's kind of a window into the unseen. Even the forces of nature and their respective patterns geometrically can be seen when we look at things like vortexes. Now, I've seen a lot of cymatics and a lot of interesting frozen frequencies but extraordinary phenomenon was said to take place in this serene setting a large hole in a rock wall revealed a platform constructed by monks at a height of about 250 meters ropes were used for the descent from the cliff's top leading to the discovery of a polished slab of rock in the meadow it was here that the secret of levitation was unveiled a bowl-shaped cavity was prepared in the rock and with the assistance of yak oxen a stone block was maneuvered into the cavity. The stage was set for an awe-inspiring display of levitation. Nineteen strategically placed musical instruments, including drums and trumpets, played a crucial role in the levitation experiment. As the monks engaged in a symphony of chanting and drumming, the stone block placed in the specially prepared cavity defied gravity and ascended into the air. The spectacle was not only witnessed, but documented by Dr. Jal, who captured the event on film showcasing i can kind of believe that i feel like if you have the right kind of frequency 
and you match that frequency in some kind of way, you can make some things shake. The convergence of ancient Tibetan practices and scientific principles. Could it be that levitation is possible? Evidence shows that we can levitate objects. Why not ourselves? Here you see an acoustic levitation experiment. Air is a fluid. Sound produces vibrations. When those vibrations are trapped between two concave surfaces, you get what's called standing waves. Scientists must use the correct frequency, which is many times ultrasonic waves, to cause levitation of an object. This knowledge is not new. Tibetan monks have known the secret of levitation for some time. An Oxford scientist, Dr. Jarl, recounts seeing the phenomenon firsthand. They maneuvered a large block of stone onto a concave stone slab in the middle of a meadow, then positioned themselves in a 90 degree angle 63 meters away from this stone with large trumpets and drums. They started with just one drum, but as the sound intensified, to Dr. Jarl's surprise, the stone wobbled and lifted up off the ground. It floated about 500 meters long and 250 meters high into a cavity in the side of the cliff. Could we acoustically levitate a person? I guess we'll find out in the five. Meet Stargazer, the new hypersonic plane that will fly from London to New York in one hour. Venus Aerospace is building a hypersonic aircraft that can carry about a dozen passengers, traveling nine times the speed of sound. The Stargazer will travel between two cities in the world by flying 6,905 miles per hour at an altitude of 170,000 feet. The rotating detonation concept, which burns 20% less fuel than a conventional engine, is being promoted by the U.S. Navy. This technology has been successfully tested before, but the Venus test was the first time using a room temperature storable propellant, which will make the engine more viable for aircraft. The jet plane will take off with conventional jet engines, but then transition to rockets once it reaches altitude. Venus Aerospace has been working on the hypersonic aircraft concept since 2020, having raised $33 million to build the plane. The firm will now begin hypersonic flight testing with a 20-foot drone that the company hopes will reach Mark 5. Hey, I know it's a lot of people sitting around waiting on that. Can you imagine the amount of people that's traveling every day? They just wish, they just wish they could just make it there in 30 minutes. That'd be crazy if they just converted all the airlines over to this type of speed. Can you imagine how efficient that would be? But do you think it'd be worth it? Because if you get somebody there that quick, like, do you think that they have a lot more people that's willing to fly like they are? Do you think that it's the backlog is so much because it's so slow? I don't know. Leave a comment. After that, so apparently there's an entire group of people out there who have all been wondering the same exact question their entire life, but they've never asked anyone because they're afraid that they'd seem absolutely insane if they ever did. What do you see when you close your eyes? Do you just see black and nothingness? Or do you, like me, sometimes see what appears to be fractals, fuzzies, or geometric shapes? For some people, it's more like the Windows Media Player from the 90s. For others, it's more of a sort of static. Well, I finally learned what it's called. It's called a CEV, Closed Eye Visualization. Apparently there are five levels of closed eye visualization. So get in the comments and let me know what you see when you close your eyes because I wonder if we see the same thing. If when you close your eyes... Hey, get in the comments right now because I want to know what y'all see right now. Everybody that's watching, close your eyes. What you see, comment right now. As you see what appears to be static, that's a level one CEV. Apparently people who can see this with their eyes closed can also train themselves to see this with their eyes open. If when you close your eyes, you see light or dark flashes, that would be a level two closed eye visualization. You might experience this in color or just in fuzzy shapes. But if yours is more like this one, then that would be level three. If you see patterns that are in motion and in color. If what you see is like the media player, then this is you. Apparently level four and five are the most rare. If you can actually see objects appear and disappear, you can do that, then you're on level four and level five is the most insane in my opinion people who have level five closed eye visualizations can override their physical perception of the real world it's like literally creating another world in your own mind typically this level can only be entered in a sensory deprivation tank entertainers are perverted one way or another most of them are and, and most of the a lot of the managers are and a lot of the record producers are and so what they do they tie hand in hand so you go into the studio you get they give you cocaine you get high and then you, you do you, you do your act you never AC, found satisfaction it, it wasn't no satisfaction i was sick I, I i had to stay high all the time to feel like a natural person i had to just uh, be and and it, it's a sickness because you were feel bad when you do it and after a while you get so you don't hear that little voice no more
Since most Americans seem pretty unfazed about this whole UFO hearing that happened recently, then what I'm about to say will not phase you either. The aliens have always been here. This is not some new phenomena. Do I have to point out the countless depictions of UFOs and aliens in our human history? Caveman paintings, medieval paintings, written accounts of extraterrestrials. But here's the real kicker. You are also an extraterrestrial, so am I. So is every single human being on this planet. Even though the government, the United States government, is now telling you that yes, aliens are real, what they're not telling you is that the story goes deeper than this. We are hybrids of these aliens. They trickle the truth down to you like little gentle raindrops. They're not gonna pour the whole bucket of water onto you because that'll shock you. But one of the clues is the movie Avatar with the blue Navi people. But reverse the roles, the humans are the Navi and the galactic colonizers are the aliens instead of the humans. So what these aliens essentially did to us is they use us as a resource. They use us as like their experiment of some sort. And just like how in the movie, Jake Sully has his own avatar. It's literally a hybrid of his DNA, technically his twins DNA, and the Navi people DNA. What do you think human beings are? We're literally just half breed hybrids. Now, each and every one of you will have different lineages to you. If you are not new to this spiritual path, this spiritual awakening, you will know your galactic origins. It will have been presented to you. If you're new on this path, don't worry, it will be shown to you. Now, if you're curious what I am, I am from an insectoid alien bloodline, basically a mantis being. Human beings are a culmination of over 12 different ET races. This is where the whole Garden of Eden story comes from. We are their Garden of Eden. We're like their Petri dish. Now, I only have three minutes for this video, but if you want to learn more about our true galactic history, how humanity got here, what are these aliens and what do they want from us? My book is linked in my bio. My book is called Made in God's Image because truth be told, we are all just fragments of God. So are these aliens. Now, I will give you a clue about these aliens. The ones that are meddling in on Earth's affairs usually are not the good ones. And the ones that are ruling over Earth, I call them the Orion Group. They blipped into our realm through the Orion constellation, which is why the Egyptian pyramids point to the Orion constellation. The Orion Group consists of mostly Anunnaki, reptilian, insectoid. Not all insectoids are bad. Whoa, I thought she said she was an insectoid. That's the bad one, right? What's going on? But for the Orion group, they are. And don't let the media fool you. The reptilians are not the most powerful. They're actually second or third rank in the Orion group. The most powerful are actually the ones in the shadows, the Anunnaki, and some insectoids. Blatantly obvious that we've shifted timelines. The concept of shifting timelines isn't the traditional way that we understand it, which is just moving forward in time. It's moving into different versions of reality based on our individual and our collective consciousness. There are currently two frequencies that exist right now, and it's getting more and more obvious as each day goes by. You even see it on TikTok, the duality, my God. And when I say frequency, I'm talking about different levels of awareness and state of being. One frequency is tied to the old paradigm. That's fear, division, control. The other frequency represents a higher level of consciousness, more in tune with love, unity, and spiritual growth. I feel like a lot of us are feeling our foot in one world and a foot in the other world because it's bringing on a lot of discomfort, a lot of confusion. But right now you have to consciously choose which frequency you want to align with. We're literally living in a parallel reality. It's crazy. And you can see it with the state of the world. There are so many people who are just like so emotionally invested in everything that's going on. And then there's those of us who are living life normally. My best advice is to just embrace the shift. Embrace it. Use it as an opportunity to grow and evolve. That's how you step into the new reality. The reality of higher consciousness. I know that so many of us want to wake people up, but if they have not woken up yet, they're most likely not on this timeline. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay. 
We all have free will if that's the reality that they choose. The timeline and the matrix just changed again. Let me explain to you. We have two Earths, two moons, two suns. We just entered the mirror reality. Be careful because everything you do will be shown to you immediately. The reason why we had two Earths is because it has to mirror each other. Two suns mirror each other. Two moons mirror each other. So if the planets and suns are mirroring each other, that means we have a mirror somewhere on this planet. I have a question for you. When you look into a puddle of water, what do you see? What if I told you this planet is a big ass mirror? Water is not only a portal, it's a mirror. It will show you everything about yourself. That's why they say if you drink more water, you will be able to tap into your inner self. But this story go a little deeper because now that we're in a mirror world, other life forms can travel through the mirror because it's a portal. Just remember, karma exists because everything's a mirror. So anytime you do something or make a choice, it always bounces off the water and comes back to you this is known as the ripple effect if you tap your finger in a puddle of water you will notice the ripples are going out but what you don't notice is the ripples will always come back and that's called karma so your choices and actions in life it's like tapping this puddle of water it will always come back but you won't see it but you will see it when it go out but never when it comes back What's taking place in the universe is a great celestial event because we are not doing our spiritual journey or our spiritual mission. So the universe has given us two suns, two moons, two earths to push us closer to our spiritual journey. We've been on this planet for a long ass time just fucking around. It's no more fucking around. Things are about to get heated because we have no more time to play games in the matrix. But let me explain to you about how these timelines are really shifting and we are going to meet our twins from the parallel world. One day I went into the supermarket. I seen this guy. He looked just like me. I mean, the energy was like, I just knew him without knowing him, if that makes sense. So the guy looked just like me. I was with my grandma. My grandma walked over to the guy, asked the guy, what is your name? The dude had my name, first name, last name, and he had my birthday. He looked just like me. This whole event of seeing someone that looked just like me with the same name and the same birthday really bothered me, right? So I left the supermarket, went home. I called the market. They said no one with that name has ever worked there. But my grandma seen him and I seen him. I'm telling you this story because I want people to understand that we are going to And he found out that his other person is working in the grocery store putting stickers on the fruit and stuff, man. I wonder if that was a case. Like where would I see myself at? Great time shift. That's why you hear about all these floods, more floods, more storm, because it's all about water. The universe is trying to show us our image of who we are in the spirit. If you can't accept your image of who you are in the spirit, you will always be stuck in the matrix. It's a reason why the deserts are now flooding again. A great detox is coming. At the end of my videos, I usually say, TikTok, my video is fake. I'm not teaching. Up. BS. I am teaching. Pregnant has clearly shifted timelines multiple times, but they're like aware of it and they're freaking out. And I feel so bad. We believe you. I know it's weird and it feels weird, but it's okay. It's happened to a lot of people. You are not alone. Watch this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I just want to talk about something that I've never actually talked about before because I am so sure that I've either either experienced what the original uh you know the original uh creator's experience was or I was experiencing the lady whose videos uh whose video I stitched like her explanation so let me just get into that real quick okay so when I was younger I would have a lot of accidents uh a lot of uh near death experiences um some of which have literally you know just had me shook you know um but there was this one time in particular and nobody fucking believes me because um they said i was only gone for like a few minutes but uh it was after school i remember this day because it was cold and it was wet 
specifically. And I had just gotten home and I couldn't get out of my backyard. The backyard, uh, like it was, it was locked shut essentially. So I was trying to climb, uh, this little patio with stairs that we had in our backyard, but the wood on the stairs had already rotted away. And I had fallen through that shit before, so I didn't want to fall through it again. So I tried climbing upwards towards the backyard door so that I could get inside. And the minute I grabbed onto the railing, because I had jumped up to grab the railing, I fell backwards. I didn't exactly break the railing, but I fell backwards and hit my head. And I remember just laying there kind of uh shocked like and I can't really explain what was happening but um like all of a sudden that gray that grayish weather we were having the wet if all of a sudden just felt like dry and cold but I remember specifically that it was raining so I was very confused I was like how long was I out here now at the time I did not have a phone um, I was not allowed to have a phone until high school, so I didn't have a phone on me, so I didn't know what time it was. Um, but I, oh, once I, you know, gained, you know, gathered my bearings, I had, uh, uh, walked up to the back, uh, back door and I saw my dad. He let me in. He was asking me what I was doing in the backyard because he said he just saw me go into my room, which was weird because I had just got home from school and, uh, this school that I uh, went to specifically in school at like 2.15. So it's like a 15, 30 minute walk back to my house. It should have been 3. But he said that it was like around 5 and he just saw me go back into my room. And I don't know why I couldn't articulate the words that I was trying to say. But everybody called me crazy. So weird, just really weird shit. I thought I was down on the ground for... You know. What y'all feel, man? Y'all thinking she up here capping? Y'all feeling like she really did have experience? Like, who am I to judge? I can't tell her what that girl went through. You know what I mean? But I want to hear y'all thoughts. Let me know. A couple hours at the most. But not only did my family say that they saw me go into my room, they said that I was only gone for at least 10 minutes. But I swear to God, I was on the ground. For hours, apparently. I was on the ground for a good few hours. And that's really the only conclusion I could come up with. Like, what happened that day? Like, I hit my head pretty badly. And then, like, like, like the original girl said before, there were things in my room that were changed. But nobody had actually touched my things because I was anal about people touching my shit. I didn't want anybody touching it. But everything was rearranged in a weird way. And I even had these makeshift bottles <laughs> that I, uh, that was like different colors. It was like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, uh, green, blue, purple. And they rearranged, uh, from purple to red instead of red to purple like I had usually arranged those things so I was like what's up with this and they were like no you you keep it like that you arrange it like that and it felt like I did arrange it like that but I like arranging things from red to purple I like arranging I liked arranging those bottles red to purple I like arranging my things from smallest to biggest or uh, beginning of the colors of uh, color wheel to the end of the color wheel. I know this, but it was arranged differently. And this has happened to me a couple of different times, right? Like uh, in high school, I ended up having a really bad asthma attack. I almost died, and I went to the hospital. I ended up being better, and I went home. But again. A lot of shit was just not arranged right. And something that I uh, noticed kind of just off, it was very off, was my grandma's uh, nightstand. Because I was always playing around with her stuff because she allowed me to. Her perfumes, where her perfumes usually were on the left top side. Like on the uh, top left of the night um, the nightstand. Those perfumes were now on the opposite side. 
And I was like, Grandma, did you re- originally, like, did you change that or something? She was like, no, I always had it like that. Huh? <laughs> and it's just a bunch of experiences like that. It was so weird. I had, um, but, you know, I had something recently happen with me and my boyfriend where we were going to go and pick up uh, his parents uh, from a bar and they weren't too far. But we got into the car and I immediately just noticed the color of the moon. It was very specific, the color of the moon. And then, boom, everything just changed again. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And we discussed possible theories for it, but we couldn't just nail down what the fuck was ha- uh, what the fuck was going on, what the fuck was happening. We just knew that the energy was off, everything shifted, and shit was weird. Um, but yeah, that was very long. Uh, if I did not explain it very well in this video, I am so sorry. I don't know how to explain this. I don't know what the fuck happened to me. But everything is off. Every single thing is off. I think it's happened to me. A couple of shit is off. I can't agree with her. I definitely can. Different times and now I don't know what the fuck is going on. My mind is blown. Okay, if you like things that have to do with interdimensional communication, communicating with your higher self, or if you're one of the few that know what plasma is, stay tuned because this is an incredible deep dive on how to communicate with the universe. Okay, so this is a complete download. I cannot explain this, but it completely makes sense. So, here's how it all started. And you might get this, we'll see. This is definitely for a certain type of audience, but just have an open mind and listen to what I'm about to say. So in my bedroom, the air became thicker and I felt like there was a presence there. So I asked the presence, I was like, I'm open, what do you want to tell me? And I'm sorry for the dog here, okay? Who cares? And I started to get a complete and utter download, which I'm gonna tell you now. So I was first shown a lotus with petals and there were beans on each side of the lotus. There were three on one side and three on the other. It stood for these three are our human selves and these three were our higher selves. This is my actual shitty drawing. Basically, the way we communicate with each other is through interaction. It's almost like picture us on a Gravitron where our higher selves are literally, we're all together in this. And our world or dimension is spinning like a fan and we just can't see each other, but we're both on the same plane. They're almost just like on the flip side, like they're inside of a pocket universe, if that makes sense, but they're here. It's not even a pocket universe. It's like a pocket reality within our reality. Okay. I swear this is going to get way better. Just hang on. So they basically told me through interaction is how they learn from us and we learn from them. They can appear to us in holographic images. In dreams and ideas, they're starting to appear more and more. You probably are experiencing this. They said the number one way to learn how to open communication with them is to actually lean into your fear. And when you learn to open to fear and learn to feel your fear, you'll start to be able to communicate with these beings more and not to be scared of it. They say that this is the beginning of communication with these beings, which I call plasma beings. Oh, and don't worry, I'm gonna tell you how to communicate. Oh, they also said that they are teaching us with these holographic images, but they're also learning from our behaviors too in response to what they teach us. Okay, so here's where it's at. <laughs> That's interesting. I asked where these beings are. They said they're inside of us, they're in pockets, but they can also come outside into our vision to show us things. But the connection is always inside. And then, then they said we'll sense the spaces around us. We'll begin to sense the spaces around us by and this is when a portal literally opened up in the lotus image they were showing me. And this is not a great depiction, but I tried my best to make this on AI. An ant, a queen ant, almost like a queen bee, but a queen. What kind of psychedelic trip was she taking? Was she talking about her dream or was she talking about a trip? Queen ant came through this portal, which was in the middle of the, of the humans and the higher self. And it almost showed me that the universe Think of the universe as an ant, as a queen ant. And we are the antenna. The human beings are one antenna and our higher selves are one antenna. 
So I learned three things from this download I'm about to tell you, and it was honestly incredible. I could not come up with this myself. I'm sorry, I just can't. So these beings told me that we can learn a lot from the ant, how to communicate with these beings by how ants communicate with their senses and with their tendrils. I didn't even know what a tendril was, by the way, until I Googled after I got this download. They said that this sense that the tendril uses, I think they're called tendrils, will help us. They said it had to do with something with smell and sniffing. And through smell and sniffing like a tendril, we would sense the spaces around us more and be able to communicate with these beings and that certain beings even have certain smells. I know this might sound crazy, but just wait, it kind of connects. And I'm still learning. We're all still learning. I'm giving this to you so you can do your own research and go on your own deep dive. Okay, so I said, anything else you need to tell me? And then I went off my own journey. Uh, they said, tendrils communicate. And then they said, have fun. I was like, thank you. So then I did my own research and I found three things. Okay, so number one, the base of the antenna where the two antennas connect, this holds the answers to how we actually can communicate better with our higher selves. Remember, just like the download said, this is me and this is my higher self. We are both sensing here, this will explain it. So ants have antenna. Remember, the universe is the ant. We're the antenna. They're paired appendages, us and our higher self, that are used for sensing and communication. When I saw the smelling, I almost lost my mind because I didn't even know that. Um, it said ant antenna are jointed or genticulate. They have an elbowed shape. These different segments have to do with how we can use our body to communicate and be an antenna, but also send out communications to other humans or beings. Once again, we need to elaborate on all this, but I don't have a lot of time in this. Maybe I'll make a YouTube video. So basically, I'll get into this in other videos because I have more to say, but the part of the head, the base of the antenna holds the answers to how we communicate with our higher self. Okay, two. So the functions of an ant antenna is what we can learn to do as humans. So using ourselves to smell their, our environment, using it to taste our environment, using touch to send messages through just touch, and communicating with other ants by sensing pheromones. I think this might have to do with telepathy, but also with interacting with interdimensional beings. I know that sounds cray cray, but it won't sound crazy in a few years. Guys, the aliens, most of them are interdimensional beings. I'm sorry. Sorry to burst your bubble. Also grooming ourselves. I feel like we already do that. We shower. Okay. So one more thing with number two. Um, they wrote this, I think, 10 years ago. The University of Melbourne scientists shown a new light on ant communication. The ants do not only receive information through their antenna, but they also use them to convey social signals. For the first time, they discovered that ant antenna are a two-way communication system rather than just a receptor. Remember how people say humans are like antennas and we just receive consciousness? Guess what? We also send it out. Obviously, this makes sense. This is how we feel when someone's vibe is off or we send. It's kind of like when you what you send out, you get back, right? This is all in ancient mythology, guys. Everything I'm saying, I think you could find ancient mythology. I think even like symbols of ants and beetles and all these other things I'm talking about. So anyway, they wanted us to know that we can also send out things with our consciousness, not just receive. <laughs> Excited for the future. Okay, number three is the best. Learning how to expand on our olfactory senses, which have to do with sniffing and pheromones, will help us connect with these beings somehow. This is where I got into a crazy ass deep dive. So olfactory receptors on the antenna bind to free floating molecules such as water vapor. Uh, this has to do with plasma intelligence. Anyone who doesn't know about that, go to my plasma intelligence playlist. Basically the energy around us or water vapor, I'm not saying plasma is exactly water vapor. I'm just saying there is a connection here. Basically, the space around us, we are going to learn how to sense with our olfactory receptors. Just like how ants tap into this with their antenna, we are going to learn somehow, I don't have all the answers right now, somehow with sniffing and sensing, we're going to learn how to interact with these other beings in the future. But by studying things like the beetle, the monarch butterfly, and I'll get into the beetle in a second. I think there's more there. We're going to learn how to communicate. The ancients knew this. So basically all anthropoda have the olfactory thing. All humans do obviously too, but beetles are included in this. I think there's also something specific with beetles um, that they believed. Obviously it has a lot to do with ancient mythology and olfactory senses and sensing with our tendrils. See, the tendril is sensing the sun. Mwahaha. Oh my God, look, the wing is a tendril. <gasps> oh my God, maybe there's something to that. I just discovered that. 
Okay, guys, maybe our angel wings, maybe this is far out there, but maybe we're one side of the wing. Our higher self is the other side of the wing. These are antennas, and it has to do with sensing and smelling, and this is how we connect to plasma or the sun or this intelligence that's all around us at all times. And in this intelligence, in this plasma, it holds consciousness, which are these beings that are communicating with us, which are literally... Yes, that's so cool. Okay. Uh, but yeah, in ancient uh, Egyptian, the Beatles had to do with transformation, rebirth, protection. You can read into this another time. So it helps us communicate is the space between. It is called plasma, energy, ether. You can also call it the honeycomb, the matrix, bees, honey. And I found an exact replica of what I think it is. Something called cuticular hydrocarbons. Picture this as like bioplasma or the aura or our soul. It's like a denser form of plasma in my opinion. I'm using a metaphor here. Basically most insects, or if not all, um, especially the ones I'm talking about, have this and it serves as a barrier and helps the insects communicate. Also the profiles are unique to each ant which could explain my soul theory. As above, so below. Just like these ants have this wax-like layer of CHC, I think this is what our aura is. Just saying. We each have our own relationship with this plasma. Okay, last but not least, really quick. My Aunt Jean always comes to me in my sleep. She's like a spirit guide for me. I barely knew her when I was alive. She was not very significant to me, but she always comes to me and she said she had to do with interdimensional communication. Well, after this, Aunt Jean, Aunt, Aunt, interdimensional communication, and guess what the freaking word Jean means? God is gracious, or it has to do with Yahweh, which I think also connects to plasma. So she was basically telling me, ants, God, plasma, interdimensional communication. Isn't that nuts how dreams communicate? Guys, it all tracks, okay? Just wait for the future. I think I'm right. The system wants to keep you down. The system does not want humanity to ascend. Not only do they alter our foods, poison our foods, poison the air, alter the climate, force you to consume certain media, force you to be programmed by certain teachings and certain media, perpetuate toxic Hollywood culture. They teach you to keep your ego as your top priority and to shut down your true soul self, your true inner child. Let me tell you the insidious and nefarious reason why they keep doing this to us. It's to keep your DNA suppressed. As you all know, if you studied, you know, a little bit more advanced physics or a little bit more advanced biology, frequencies, waves, and vibrations can affect your DNA. It can affect everything within your system. This is why radiation is also about the same theory. Free radicals actually attach to you and deteriorate you from the inside out. In a lesser way, this is being done to our DNA. Everything that I just mentioned a couple of seconds ago. Think about it. If your DNA is suppressed, your consciousness is suppressed, what kind of children are you going to give birth to? When an unawakened, low vibrational, high density person also attracts and marries and procreates with the same type, the child that comes out of that procreation will likely carry the same kind of density, low vibration, poison in their system. And this child or this baby's avatar, the physical vessel that is supposed to carry a soul can only carry a certain type of soul. And guess what? It's not going to be an indigo. It's not going to be a star seed. It's not going to be an advanced soul because the baby's avatar is so tarnished, heavily reduced from its true angelic form that the avatar will be too weak to house a powerful soul. A powerful soul's energy is like a lightning strike. The plasma or plasmoid is too powerful to be contained in a vessel that is not strong enough. So this is what I mean by insidious and nefarious. They know what they're doing to us and they want to stop the true indigos, the true star seas, the true Christ consciousness children or souls to come in because our vessels are going to be so damaged. Remember there was a theory saying that the gray aliens um, who you know can't eat, don't have any emotions, practically don't have a soul, are the future versions of humans? If we keep progressing down this timeline of allowing these people, you know, the ones in control to do this to us, likely chances are it's going to look like that. So right now, all of you guys, be aware of what you consume, media and food-wise. Get air purifiers, um, get filtrations for your water. If your soul is telling you to move somewhere else, listen to it, move somewhere else. Because different countries have different stargates and portals and energies. Your energy may not be aligned to the current place that you live in. 
you're new to all this and you would like to learn more as to why the people in control, or technically if you want to call our alien overlords, are doing this to us, their true intentions towards humanity is revealed in my book, Made in God's Image. I talk about the Matrix system, I talk about uh, fallen angelics, I talk about aliens, everything you need to know that I cannot say here on TikTok. You can find my book, linked in my bio. Earth is going to have what's known as a mini moon okay. starting on Sunday the 29th. So the mini moon is actually an asteroid that's going to be passing close to Earth uh, and be like a little buddy for our main big every night kind of moon. Oh, There's the asteroid. Cute. It's coming 93 million miles to us from uh, an asteroid belt near our sun. It's called Arjuna. Uh, now here's where it gets a little bit terrifying. I'm reading the article about this and it tells me that in August this asteroid was discovered by something called the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. That that doesn't sound like a yeah. So, first of all, the fact that we built one of those means we're worried. We want, we want to be sure what's out there. Yeah. So then you get to the last paragraph of the article, and it says, just FYI. Honey, don't give me nightmares. 2029, there's another asteroid, Apophis, which will pass closer to our Earth than a SpaceX satellite. And then, quote, it's not expected to hit Earth despite its close approach, but scientists are sending spacecraft to study it just to be sure. Wait, what's the name what? of it? What are you? My brain literally would not let me rest until I make this video. So here you go. If you follow, you follow. Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, A-T-L-A-S, Atlas. The first thing my mind went to was Atlas at CERN. Four days after the eclipse, CERN is going to run their Large Hadron Collider again through October the 28th, 22 days. 22 is the number of Saturn, Kronos, in astrology. It's coming 93 million miles to us from uh, an asteroid belt. The number 93 is of great significance in the Lima, founded by English author and occultist Aleister Crowley in 1904 with the writing of the Book of the Law. The central philosophy of the Lima is in two phrases, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Do what thou wilt. The Lima. You know, I'm sure this is uh, all speculation and not related at all. So please don't ban this video. I just find it interesting that they emphasize that number once again, 93. And it says, just FYI, Honey, don't give me nightmares. 2029, there's another asteroid, Apophis, which will. Apex, also known as Apophis, like the asteroid that's coming in 2029. Anyway. An ancient Egyptian deity who represented chaos and darkness and was the opponent of light and order. The name Apophis is the ancient Greek version of the name Apep. That's odd. During the last total solar eclipse, NASA shot three rockets into the sky and they called the mission Apep. I did a whole video on it. You should check it out. But of course, Atlas is known for holding up the pillars of heaven or the celestial spheres. Coincidentally, Atlas Insurance and Atlas Roofing have both been involved in Hurricane Helene. Coincidentally, Helene is a moon of Saturn, aka Kronos, that orbits 60 degrees ahead of a larger moon, Dion, making it a Trojan moon. Atlas was also a brother of Prometheus. Saturn, Kronos, was overthrown by his son, Zeus. Here's our boy Atlas. As you can see, he's holding up. It's, you probably can't see it, but it says in the top left corner up there, he's holding up the crystalline firmament. Here's Apep, of course, that serpent that Ra had to battle when he went underground. And then he emerged in the form of a scarab beetle. Side note, uh, my heart does go out to any victims um, of this hurricane and anybody that has lost their lives and anybody that's just going through a hard time. I truly hope that you receive the help that you need. Helene is a moon of Saturn. In 1998, it was officially named after Helen of Troy, who was the granddaughter of Kronos. Saturn and um, like I said this is all just speculation um, but anyway and thus the etymology of the name Helen would be connected with the root of Venus Lucifer morning star and of course Venus will be accompanying this Sun during this 
solar eclipse, October the 2nd. And of course, this eclipse is happening on October the 2nd, 2024. In numerology, that is 11. In astrology, 11 represents Uranus. Kronos, Saturn is the son of Uranus. Uranus. Anywho, uh, Helen was the daughter of Leda. Some ancient writers thought that she was the mother of Castor, who was one of the heavenly twins. This eclipse on October the 2nd is taking place in Libra. Okay, remember that in Libra. Jupiter, Zeus, will be in Gemini. Gemini is the twins. Okay, she was also believed to have been the mother of... The other twin, Pollux, and of course, Helen. Now, as the story goes, Helen is believed to be the daughter of Leda or Nemesis, okay? This um, eclipse is taking place in Libra, okay? Nemesis balanced the scales of revenge in both the mortal world and of Mount Olympus. Libra means to balance the scales. Again, this speculation is sure as speculating. <laughs> I should probably just stop there because I'm already shadow banned on TikTok and Instagram. I, yeah, by this point, they just might throw me underneath the, the whole internet. Um, I'm just going to stop here. But I will say this second moon that we are getting, I think it's interesting that we all know the moon's effect on the tides and how this flooding is happening right before the appearance of this second moon um you should be able to see the moon tonight i'm recording this video september the 29th sunday 2024 the last thing that i'll say is they said that this mini moon is coming from the art